everyone. My name is Michał Estrzemski. This is Michał Dulko and Paweł Koniszewski. And we're going to talk to you about live migration. And let's start with a question. Why even bother about it? So what can live migration do to, uh, to improve your cloud? So we're going to talk about three use cases. First one is imminent host failure, maintenance mode, and optimal resource placement. And first, and so let's start with imminent host failure. Imminent uh, in this context means that we still have uh, control over our host, but it, we presume it may go down at any moment, and we want to play on the safe side and migrate out of it. So that may be mean that, for example, our te temperature is spiking up, and that may, may, may mean that we have cooling issues. Disk may, uh, may start to show problems. We don't want to lose any data. For example, one of the network cards may break, but we still, ha still have uh, control over our management network if we want to mitigate uh, the pro network problems. Or your data center might get struck by a flood, which it actually happened in one of the corporations uh, in Poland. And this, in this case, you may migrate your virtual machines uh, above water surface. <laughs> uh, the most common uh, use case for live migration is a maintenance mode. It's a scheduled maintenance in which uh, we intentionally want to put down a host. For example, we want to change the firmware, so up the upgrade BIOS, hardware upgrade, even replace whole node, uh, maybe upgrade kernel. And we just migrate, we just clean, free up all the resources or the workloads out of the host, and then we can proceed with, with whatever we want to do with it. Uh, another interesting thing to do with live migration is to place your resources in a way that would be more optimal than it was before. For example, we can reduce costs or by moving virtual machines closer to each other or closer to their storage so we can uh, lessen the latency between these two resources and therefore uh, gain a little bit of performance but with very little cost. Or, for example, you can stack every uh, stack uh, vi uh, all your virtual machines on a single host or a several hosts, and free, therefore free up additional hosts, turn them off, save power, save money. Uh, on the other hand, you can, for example, increase resiliency of your cluster. So, noise enable separation would be one or so one example. Noise enable is a virtual machine which uh, consumes unshareable resources. For example, CPU cache. You can't put quota on the CPU cache. So one, uh, if one uh, uh, virtual machine consumes all of it, it may impact performance on other virtual machines on the same node. And you might want to separate this, this problematic uh, virtual machine so, every, uh, so other virtual ma machines on the same host won't be affected by it. Or for example, you can spread uh, your workload across as many hosts as possible. So uh, a failure of a single node will cause less damage than it would before. So, Let's talk about Javadar flow. I give up to Michal. Um, so Michal told you about what live migration can uh, solve. And let's talk about how it actually works. So there are a few assumptions. Uh, live migration is, of course, live. That means that uh, the VM is still running uh, uh, through all the process. Uh, it is consistent. So the state of a VM on the source host is the same as on destination host when the, transi the, when the transition moment comes. Uh, it is transparent, so VM doesn't know and doesn't need to know that it is live migrated. And we need to target for minimal service disruption, so we need to keep downtime uh, of a VM as low as possible. Uh, in OpenStack, there are various types of live mig of migrations. So first of all, there's non-live migration, called also called migration. This is simply uh, shutting down the VM on the source host and booting it up on uh, the destination host. Uh, this is something we, co we don't want to cover in this presentation. Uh, we will be talking mostly about true life migration. So uh, it, is, it can be based on shared storage or volumes. So you need to have shared storage for your, uh, vol uh, for your VM internals, for example, Ceph or uh, even in NFS. Or you need to uh, boot your VMs from volumes. Uh, there's also block life migration, and uh, this, is, this is an option that doesn't require you to have shared storage, but uh, your, because your disk, your ephemeral disk, will be transferred over the network. The problem is that VM is suspended during this during the moment of disk transfer, so uh, the downtime is quite high. But still, this is life, kind of live migration. And there are some compatibility problems with uh, with live migration. 
Uh, the most, uh, what's most important on this uh, table is the on the bottom uh, right. Uh, that means that um, if you have any uh, read-only um, read-only devices attached to your VMs, for example CD-ROMs, you can only uh, live migrate such VMs if you have uh, its internals on shared storage. So uh, this is most flexible com uh, configuration. You probably want to uh, want to go with that. So uh, let me hand over to Pavel, who will talk about how it works under the hood. Well, so talk, ab uh, talk about live migration process. Um, it basically consists of five stages. First stage, pre-migration, belongs to OpenStack. Second stage, reservation, belongs to both OpenStack and hypervisor. And every needs I I next step um, belongs to hypervisor. Let me briefly walk you through each step. Um, at the very beginning, we have two compute nodes, A and B, and virtual machine are running on compute node A. Um, in this stage, we need to choose to which host our VM will be live migrated. We can do it explicitly, on or let scheduler do it for us. When we know to which host our VM will be live migrated, OpenStack and hypervisor needs to reserve needed resources on destination host. This is to be sure that in the whole process, new compute node will be capable to host VM. When resources are uh, when resources are claimed, hypervisor starts to iteratively iteratively pre-copy uh, VM state to destination host. In the very first iter iteration, whole memory is transferred to destination host, and in every another iteration, dirty pages are copied to destination host. Um, notice that VM continues to run on source host, so that it still may write something to memory. If it writes something to memory, um, memory on compute node B becomes outdated, and we need to retransfer such pages. And this is what we call dirty pages. Um, when VM state is nearly the same on both hosts, hypervisor decides to pause VM on compute node A and transfer transfers remaining state to compute node B. And when, VM, when both states are actually the same, it starts VM on compute node B and removes the VM from compute node A. Um, what is worth mentioning here is that um, in case of any failure, everything can be rolled back so that VM will, be, will continue to run on compute node A without any disruption. Now, let's talk about per performance and reliability. So, we don't live in a perfect world, and there are quite, some, quite several pitfalls we, uh, we want to uh, put some light, uh, shed some light on, and we'll talk each of, about each of these uh, later on, but let me walk through it. Uh, so currently, OpenStack doesn't allow you to perform any operation on a virtual machine w during live migration, not even cancel live migration. Uh, pretty much all the, uh, all the f stuff you can do with it is to destroy a virtual machine, which probably you don't want to. And that's, that's one of the problems with OpenStack, especially that, as Pavel mentioned, uh, we transfer the state uh, when it and it, what states change uh, what when state change we have to transfer the changes as well to the network and if st so if tr if uh, state changes too fast we may end up not being able to migrate at all because uh, because our network may not suffice simply uh, so we may end up with uh, completely with uh, live migration we we can't pause we can't uh, cancel we and it will never end by itself. Mm. If that occurs, also, I mean, live migration can ge can generate generate a very heavy load on the network, and uh, the worst part about it is that OpenStack by default using use uh, management network to perform live migration. So, if for example we end up with this virtual machine that will end up with will eat up uh, all of the of our all of our uh, bandwidth, it might disrupt other services like for example Rabbit, and that's 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 a critical thing. Um, there's also some issues between uh, compute nodes with different CPUs because to migrate the state of the virtual machine, the instruction sets has to be compatible with each other. And well, there, there are cool is a few ways to achieve compatibility. We'll talk about this later. And there is a problem with uh, schedules of memory over subscription. And yeah, we'll talk about later uh, this uh, again. Okay, let's get into details. Uh, so first of all, as Mr. said, you cannot uh, um, schedule any operations uh, through OpenStack on ongoing live migration process. 
but you can uh, still uh, use Vir instead of that. Uh, so first of all, if you want to know uh, what's going on with your live migration, you can use dom drop info command uh, on the um, source compute uh, node. Uh, so this, these are examples of a few uh, information that it uh, uh, produces. Uh, so first of all, one of the most important is time elapsed. Uh, so this is around 30 minutes. This, this one uh, is uh, going for a quite long time. And uh, the second important one is data remaining. So this, this means how much data still uh, is remaining to be transferred. Uh, so is, if that uh, value doesn't change over time, then you pr you're probably, uh, your migration is probably stuck. So to resolve that, uh, you may, you may uh, try these two, two commands. So first of all, you may cancel the process. So live migration, so the VM on the destination host will be destroyed, and uh, uh, VM on the source host will continue to run. That's dom drop abort command of Vir. And also, you can force live migration to finish. Uh, the trade-off is the downtime, of course. So you, you will suspend the VM on the, the source host, so it stops uh, writing to the memory, and the, tra the transfer, the state can be transferred uh, over the network. So we increase increase the uh, downtime, but uh, uh, the migration will finish. Uh, these were kind of absolute solutions, and uh, we can try to mitigate some uh, uh, try to some mitigation solutions. Uh, so first of all, we can tune uh, the maximum downtime. This maximum tolerable downtime that uh, that a VM can suffer, and uh, Kimu. So the lower the the higher the value, the Earlier, the Kimu can decide to uh, actually stop uh, the VM on the source host and transfer the remaining state. So there are two commands. One is uh, the Kimu command, and the second one is uh, Virsh command for that. So the difference is that the Kimu one can be used only on live migration that isn't in progress, and LiveVir one can be used only on live migration that is in progress. Also, uh, Kimu one accepts values that are uh, that are lower than one, and uh, LiveVir one. Uh, accepts only values uh, higher or equal to one. Uh, another idea to mitigate the problem with uh, never-ending life migration is auto-converge feature of uh, Kimu. So uh, you can enable it adding uh, vir migrate auto-converge flag to your um, life migration flag in NovaConf. And uh, this works in a way that when uh, Kimu notices that uh, life migration isn't progressing, then it uh, just throttles down the memory writes to 25% of initial performance. So uh, if the rate of memory writes is lower, then uh, probably your VM will be more likely to migrate. The problem is that uh, this doesn't degrade the performance continuously. So if throttling down to 25% isn't enough, then your live migration will sti still hang. Uh, another thing we noticed uh, with our tests is uh, that uh, the flag vir migrate tunnel is uh, by default on, and it make, it works in a way that it makes uh, uh, the, it transfer the data from hypervisor to the libvirt process, then through the libvirt uh, through the network uh, to libvirt process on a destination host, and then back to hypervisor on destination host. So when we disable this flag, uh, hypervisors talk to each other directly. So uh, this, we found that uh, this uh, disabling this flag. Uh, increases the performance of live migration four times. This may depend probably on hardware and uh, the network capabilities. But still, uh, you, can, you can try that to increase the performance. The problem is that uh, you are losing the, uh, the encryption uh, if, you are, uh, if you are making your hypervisor to talk to each other directly. Yeah. Also, you may uh, tune the bandwidth used by a single live migration process, so there are two ways to do that. The libvirt comment for a certain VM, just, just to set it for, a, for one VM. And the uh, global NovaConf setting live migration bandwidth, uh, that set is globally for one uh, compute node. Uh, so the f default value for, uh, for this option is like uh, 7,000 uh, petabytes per second. So that's kind of um, infinity. <laughs> um, Another, another uh, idea to uh, lower the bandwidth used by uh, live migration is this uh, algorithm. Well, it's XOR binary zero run length encoding compression. <laughs> Whoa, I did it. <laughs> um, so there's NovaConf settings also. Uh, you, you need to add this flag, vir migrate compressed. So um, the idea, the name is uh, quite, uh, 
quite uh, hard to pronounce, but the idea is very simple. Uh, you just uh, you just try to transfer the deltas, the divs of uh, of the uh, of the pages. So uh, so just destination host gets the uh, div or patch, applies to his version of uh, of a page, and he has the updated page. So uh, so this can this should lower the bandwidth used. If you rely on live migration strongly, then you may want to have it on a dedicated network. So normally, the, all the traffic goes through management network, as Michal said. And uh, uh, there's an idea of a workaround for that. Uh, so if we, have, uh, we, if we want to have a dedicated live migration network, uh, we may add a suffix to the option live migration URI. So this option is used by Livvirt to decide how to connect with, uh, uh, with another compute node. And uh, you may add this percent as sign is uh, changed to uh, to the host name. So if you add a suffix there and set up your DNS to resolve uh, host names with suffix to IPs in your dedicated network, then your live migration will be uh, going through that dedicated network. So that's that should work. Um, I will hand over to Pavel, who will talk about a little more about other issues. Uh, okay. So Michal told you that. Uh, CPU instruction set of source host need to be a subset of instruction set of destination host. Consider situation where VM is running on compute node A and you want to live migrate it compute node B. Um, it will pass because actually compute node B contains both instruction sets MMX and AVX. However, if we revert this situation, we want to live migrate VM from compute node B to compute node A, it will fail because probably compute node A will not understand CPU state of a VM because it may use some kind of instructions from SSE2. Um, to mitigate this problem, you can explicitly set VM CPU in NovaConf. Um, we do not encourage you to use this in your whole cluster because you really want to let VM use newest pos possible instruction set for per performance optimizations. However, you can, for example, make host aggregate when, where your environment will be heterogeneous. And in such host aggregate, you can explicitly set CPU model to specific one. Um, list of supported names you can, can be found in libvirt CPU map XML. Um, it also contains which instructions belong, belongs to which CPU model. Um, there is also a problem with memory subscription. But before I start talking about um, how many of you use RAM allocation ratio that is different than 1.0 in production environment? OK, some uses it. So the problem is that um, RAM allocation ratio is something that belongs to scheduler. Uh, if compute node reports 2 gigabytes of memory to Nova conductor and Nova scheduler, Nova scheduler will get this value and multiply it by RAM allocation ratio. And in the result, it will report more, me more memory than compute node reported. Um, <coughs> to mitigate this problem, uh, you can set reserved host memory megabytes to negative value. Um, it basically says how much memory Nova Compute can use for itself. So if you set it to negative value, it will be subtracted from um, uh, rep from, from available memory, so that compute node will, in the result, re report more memory that, than you actually have, so that Nova Conductor and Nova Scheduler will understand what memory of sub memory of subscri subscription is. However, um, Nova Compute will not understand anymore what memory what, what memory available is. So now let's talk about secure life migration. Yeah, security matters. Uh, Everything can be sniffed on, especially in the light of recent uh, recent uh, zero day on virtual machines. You can't rely on uh, on your uh, on on your hardware that it will it will be safe. And consider that live migration transfers whole memory of our network. So uh, that means keys, users, maybe encrypted passwords, pretty much anything that is in memory goes through network. So if you if you have uh, money in the middle. Uh, you may lose some valuable data uh, you may, because your machines may contain, uh, contain data, uh, the sensitive data, and uh, maybe there's some legal issues with unencrypted uh, data transfer SLA issues, like for example when you use PC, when you have PCI compliance and and you don't want uh, that transfer, that data transfer to be unencrypted. 
there are three ways to perform encryption right life migration. Uh, so there is a, there, when you would turn off the tunnel mode, the hypervisor will talk to each other, not VR revert. And if your hypervisor does, uh, you can do it via encrypted, uh, via encryp encry can encrypted transfer. Uh, yeah, you can use it, but Kimu doesn't do it, so we won't dig into it. Uh, to use encrypted uh, transfer in Kimu, you might want to use Tanode. In this way, Libvirt itself uh, supports uh, encryption. Encryption. You just need to uh, change the uh, the protocol that uh, that Libvirt transfer its uh, data to SSH or TLS, uh, and you need to. Uh, turn on the uh, migrate tunnel flag. Problem is, it just use only only one core per uh, per migration, so that's that's kind of, kind of performance issue. Um, way to mitigate, for example, that maybe you can, for example, create uh, the dedicated network for life migration can be encrypted to. Uh, you can use some L2 level L2 layer encryption that and. That will be completely transparent to hypervisor, but uh, since I'll dig in a little bit more about uh, into tunnel transport because it's more uh, it's more flexible. So we've made a little bit of a uh, mm, test and to compare the transfer rate of the uh, TCP and SSH tra tunnel uh, tunnel transmission. Uh, the way it's not so problematic is that it uh, relies heavily on the memory access so uh, and transfer of memory between processes so it uh, it may become problematic you it can limit your transfer rate and we've made a comparative study about these two processors this is a e5 version 2 and e5 version 3 uh, version 3 has uh, ddr4 it has some few more uh, few more uh, features that uh, uh, that accelerate your uh, memory access, and uh, as you can see, the uh, performance is about 20% better with if with uh, with uh, generation three. Even though, if you uh, look closely, this uh, the generation three is, has slightly lower uh, clock rate. It's uh, 2.4 gigahertz versus 3 gigahertz on older processor, and it still has uh, about 20% better rate. So that's something to consider. So let's talk about future of like migration, what we're going to do and what's gonna happen in the following months. Um, so we told you how live migration looks like, how it actually works, uh, how you can interact with the process. Now let's talk a bit about what's in the future of live migration. Um, the first thing is multi-thread compression. Um, Michal told you about uh, compression that is uh, based on run length encoding. This is a bit different because uh, it compresses every page sent during live migration instead of pages that are recent. Um, for compression, Zlib is used. What is configurable is number of threads and compression ratio. Um, this solution is to reduce amount of data transferred over network so that live migration will probably finish faster and also will uh, help to uh, to mitigate the problem of never-ending life migration. Um, the next thing is post-copy life migration. Everything we told you before is called pre-copy life migration. Um, if you remember uh, iterative pre-copy stage of life migration process, um, VM, where VM continues to run on compute node A, this is a bit different because workload is immediately moved to destination host so that VM continues to run on compute node B. This is some kind of a trade-off because it completely removes problem of dirty pages. However, um, in case of any failure, VM state will be lost so that it needs to be restarted. And there is also a heavy impact on performance because memory haven't been, hasn't been transferred yet. So that if memory asks for, if, sorry, if VM asks for memory that hasn't been transferred yet, it needs to be transferred over network so that memory access will be way slower. The next thing is active live migration monitoring. Um, now, user needs to track every problem manually so that if live migration will ever end, the user needs to check the progress by the job info comment. Um, the monitor 
uh, will help with this because it will monitor the memory transfer to destination host. And in case of any problems detected, it will, in very first implementation, it will abort the progress, uh, abort the live migration. And maybe in the near future, it will continue live migration on VM that is paused. The last thing is actions on ongoing live migration. Um, also, Michal told you that there is no way to interact with live migration process through OpenStack. Um, every comment that he described, uh, we want to make it possible to use them through OpenStack so that user will be able to pause VM during live migration, abort live migration, check the progress to see the memory transfer, also change configuration on the fly. So as you can see, there's a lot of going on in uh, in the whole OpenStack, not only the live migration, uh, live migration uh, topic. So we want to encourage all the users and operators to give feedback, uh, any um, any opinion, any back reports, any ideas for uh, for a new feature are welcomed. So you can may you may use a mailing list for that. Uh, Bob will probably accept uh, the propositions for uh, for our new features. And apart from that, we are uh, members of uh, OpenStack Windham, uh, Windham Enterprise Group. So uh, you can catch us up on uh, IRC and uh, ask our questions if you want. And uh, we, we may uh, try to drive any features you, you need to, to have in your OpenStack cloud. <laughs> so we needed to show that disclaimer. <laughs> so OK. But let's go to Q&A. Any, any questions? Yes. Could you please use the microphone at the back? It's here. Since post copy can be awfully devastating to performance, uh, have you tried something like doing a pre copy first to get a first pass and most of the memory over and then initiating a post copy? Oh, no, we haven't tried it. Um, we, we are basing on Kimu, and post copy actually is not, is not yet implemented in Kimu, but, but that that's that's sounds like a good solution. Okay. Nice presentation, Way. Thanks. Uh, my question is do you know something about features like uh, Migrate VM, which is in a uh, suspense state? Because currently it's not possible. OpenStack does not allow um, it for you. Since Kilo, it is possible to live migrate VMs that are paused. But so uh, suspend. Um, it's the same. It's the same, actually. Okay. Libvirt, Libvirt uh, translate. Uh, I mean, in OpenStack, it is paused. In Libvirt, it is, it is suspend. Thanks. How do you verify the live migration is successful? Do you do some check, and how long does the check take? Um, well, the problem is that nothing observes what workload runs of a VM. So uh, the only way, as far as I know, to verify if the process will eventually complete is just to check it through the job job info command. OK, guys, thank you. Yeah. Have you done any work, or do you know of any work being done for uh, VM migration of uh, uh, using, for VMs using SRIOE? Um, we haven't tried it, but there is work being done in OpenStack to support it. I don't remember the name, but uh, there is a person who is working on live migration, uh, SRIOV support in live migration. Are you saying there's a blueprint for that? Yeah. Um, I was wondering, does it make sense to you for live migration to be made its own project, like Nova Scheduler, such as Nova, Nova Migrate? So it has a daemon oh. with plugins? So if I understand correctly the question, so getting live migration out of uh, Nova Compute into another project? Yeah, who, well, how is Nova, Nova currently implementing Migrate? It's all inside Nova API, and it's managing it. But like Nova Scheduler is, is moving into its own project. 
Is it, does it make sense to have oh, a it's, separate it's, project? It's so much tied into the hypervisor, and the Nova Compute is uh, talking mostly with hypervisor, so I don't it's even see a point of um, getting it out of, uh, out of Nova. <laughs> I wouldn't right. expect that. <laughs> I mean, Thanks. OpenStack just initiated initiate uh, live migration. It's uh, when it's initiated, when OpenStack actually selects the host, it's all with on the on hypervisor from since then. So, and it's only supported for KVM, right? And yeah. or libvert, basically. Libvert, Kimo, yeah. All right. Thanks. You mentioned that it is uh, possible to live migrate between hypervisor directly without so bypassing the libvirt. Yeah. Um, what but is the performance improvement uh, if you do it like that, and how can you actually set it up <laughs> if you don't so like encryption, like so if you don't want encryption? We can explain. Uh, we can explain how we have tested it. We've we've tested the network bandwidth used by a single process. So uh, in case of tunnel migration, the bandwidth uh, we just stay on 10 gigabytes network. So only like 14 percent and yes, 14 percent of of the bandwidth was was used uh, in case of tunnel migration. And we suspect that the problem is the, uh, the transfer between the processes of, of the memory. So when we turn, uh, when we uh, disable the flag from NovaConf for tunnel migration, uh, the increase in performance we uh, saw was uh, actually 70 percent of, uh, of uh, the of the bandwidth of was used. So we suspect that 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 means that uh, the live migration is progressing uh, so that much faster. Um, so basically, if you don't care about uh, encryption necessarily, you can do yes. hypervisor to hypervisor uh, by turning off the flag in NovaConf, yes. and yeah, that gets exactly. much better. There is one another thing we didn't mention. I mean, uh, URI won't work. I mean, yeah. if you want to have this uh, URI hacky thing we did with the suffix, right? Michal, mm -hmm. uh, uh, this is. Uh, the, the I mean, we mentioned uh, the left migration dedicated network, so exactly. this, this requires a tunneled, yeah. uh, tunneled on. Right, yeah, but if you don't care this. about that and not about then tunneled option is uh, is just degrading the performance. Um, and it's only by default, so that's that's thing. Yes, yeah, so but uh, but uh, this is pro this is uh, tightly coupled with uh, tightly coupled with uh, hardware you use. So this increase in performance may be uh, may be completely different in case of your hardware. So. Oh. Thank you. Um, not sure if some somebody asked this before, but did you benchmark uh, the memory consumption? Uh, I'm sorry, bandwidth consumption uh, used by pre-copy and post-copy? No, we haven't. As I said before, um, we are basic on Kimo, and it's not yet implemented in Kimo, so I don't have any any information about the bandwidth used in post-copy and pre-copy. The difference. Okay. Thank you. So before migrating, is there a way to check uh, any resources compatibility, meaning you know how many virtual CPUs and how many, what m amount of memory the target node may have? Because if it's incompatible, then maybe it's not worth it. Uh, okay. If there are those such tools, I don't think we know about it. <laughs> okay, so uh, that, that CPU is uh, the CPU compatibility thing isn't checked, so that's the problem with scheduler that it doesn't uh, check that in case of live migration, and uh, this is for a few releases this is a problem, and uh, we are trying to solve it somehow. So when you so when you are doing this migration, you are assuming that it's compatible. Uh, yes, OpenStack assumes that, and okay. uh, and then then Libvirt tries to talk to each other, and boom, we have we have a problem. Yeah, the validation is at Nova Compute level, not at the scheduler level, so it, it may it may cause the rescheduling. So also the uh, Libvirt doesn't. I mean, uh, it doesn't really check what workloads your virtual uh, your virtual machine actually uses. So it may it may not even touch the instructions that, that are problematic, but. Uh, Libert will assume that it uses all of them, so it may still break, right? That's the, hence the uh, limitation of the uh, of the uh, features feature set. You may you can limit your feature set so to the feature set that it is actually using, and therefore enab enable you to migrate. But that's again that's a trade-off, right? Sure. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Hi there. What? is required to clean up after everything if something goes wrong? 
Uh, is it is it you know during life migration? Yeah, during the migration itself. Nothing. It just works. I mean, if 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 it breaks the, I mean, the only only moment that actually uh, is vulnerable to this is is a commitment paste, right? So up up until the, then, it just copies, 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 and it stops copying. I mean, the, the first virtual machine, this, uh, the source virtual machine, is, all, is it will be still working on the same host as it worked before. So, so if you I can't... I think the answer will be, leave you take care of that. Leave yeah. you take care of cleaning up uh, after, if anything goes wrong, it reverts, reverts the, uh, the process and your VM will still run the source host. Yeah. Great. Okay, That's thanks. It. Hi. Um, should we expect problems when we want to do live migration between hypervisors that run different versions of Libvirt? Um, well, yes, there's, um, it should be backward compatible, but there are some versions of, Ki of Kimu that, that, that do not allow to live migrate to the backward version. Um, also, um, I don't know if it was removed from Nova, but I think there is a check if, if destination hypervisor is at the same version or, or higher version. So probably it will not be possible to, to live migrate to lower version of hyper hypervisor. Okay, thank you. Other question, the improvements you mentioned uh, in your, your next slides, are they foreseen for liberty? Is that what you're aiming for? Um, uh, one, at least one is, uh, I expect at least one to land in liberty. Yeah, in liberty. Um, the active live migration monitoring. Mm -hmm. um, I'm discussing about every ad an, a, another feature when, when it will be possible to, to make it happen in OpenStack. Okay, thank you. Great talk. Thank you. Are there maybe any more questions? Well, uh, that's, that's kind of funny. Uh, yeah, so the problem is that uh, actually uh, we noticed that we need to extend the, uh, the keys between root user on the source host and uh, Nova user on the destination host. So on the, from the source host, the root user is trying to SSH to, uh, for Nova user on the, uh, on the destination host. Well, it's done that way. <laughs> Any more questions? All right, I guess. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks,